getting started with a blank template. There are two types of templates in Publisher 2016. There are the blank templates, which appear as blank, white pages when you open them in Publisher. Then there are the templates that already have background colors, images, graphics and fonts built in. We discussed those in the last lesson. For this lesson, as well as the rest of the course, we're going to switch back to the blank templates in Publisher and start learning how to create and customize publications. The ability to create and apply master pages is one of the best features of Publisher. If you've never used them before, and most people haven't, you're in for a treat. Master pages can save you tons of time and hard work and help you keep your publications consistent. So what exactly are master pages, you might ask? Master pages are like overlays that contain design elements that you may want to apply to several or even all of the pages in your publication. For instance, if you were creating a photo album, you might want to create a master page that has placeholders for images. You can use the master page for all pages in the publication or create different masters. This way, you don't have to recreate layouts each time. Without master pages, you would have to manually enter all of these elements onto every page, which is a very time-consuming, labour-intensive process. Even worse, you'd have to reformat each element and position it precisely. With master pages, you can insert the element only once and choose which pages you want that element to appear on. Some common elements used in master pages include page numbers, headers and footers, but you can also add text boxes, artwork and custom watermarks. By default, Microsoft Publisher 2016 automatically includes one master page every time you create a new publication, but you can easily add more. Once you open a blank publication in Publisher, you want to do things such as set the margins and page size. Some of this you may have already established in the backstage view when you chose the blank template size. However, you can also set these things in the main publisher window using the page settings dialog box. The page settings dialog box allows you to get started designing your own publication and set options for it. You'll find the page setup dialog box by going to the page design tab on the ribbon, then going to the page setup group. It looks like this here. These three buttons will allow you to adjust the margins, orientation and size of your publication. Margins means the amount of white space that is along the top, bottom, left and right edges of your publication. Margins are measured in inches. Orientation refers to either portrait or landscape. Portrait means the longer edge of the publication makes up the height and it runs vertical. Landscape means a longer edge goes horizontally across. Size refers to the size of the publication and directly corresponds to the size that you want to print. Click the arrow at the bottom right hand corner of the page setup group. You'll then see the page setup dialog box as you can see here. Let's learn how to set options for your page. Under the page section, you're going to enter the height and width of the paper of your publication. Under the margin guides section, you'll set the amount of white space that goes around the edges of your pages. You'll enter margins for the top, left, bottom and right. Remember, this is measured in inches. Next, under the layout type section, select the layout type. One page per sheet means that one page of a publication will be printed on one sheet of paper. You can use print preview to see how it fits on the page. Booklet means your publication will be in booklet design. You'll notice the margin guide labels will change. Left will be outside, right will be inside. This lets you know where they appear in your booklet. Email will let you create a design for email. Envelope will set you up to create a standard 9.5 by 4.125 inch envelope. If you want to change the measurements, you'll have to change the width and height in the page section of the window. Folded card. Use this to create greeting cards. You'll print the sheet, then fold it to make the card. When you choose this layout, sheet fold options are displayed. You can decide how you'll fold your publication. On the right side of the window, Publisher 2016 will show you how your publication will be folded. And web page allows you to design a web page. If you choose multiple pages per sheet, you'll print more than one page of a publication on a sheet of paper. When you select this, 
target sheet options are displayed. Horizontal gap refers to the space between each column of the page. Vertical gap refers to the space between the rows. The preview window to the right shows you how it will look. As you adjust your settings, you'll be able to see changes in the preview section. If you want, you can also specify the size of the paper you'll use to print your publication. Click OK when you're finished to set your options. You can also use the size and margins buttons on the ribbon to change the margin and the page size. You can also change the page size by clicking on the size button in the page setup group. By clicking on the drop down menu, you'll see the standard sizes listed. You can click on one of the sizes to select it. Choose a size from the menu. If you don't see the size that you want, you can also click on create new page size to create a size not listed. As you can see, you can set the page size, margins and the layout type, just as we did during page setup earlier in the lesson. Fill out the information in this dialog box, then click OK. If you want to choose from preset page sizes, provided by publisher, click on more preset page sizes from the size drop down menu. Select a publication type or a manufacturer. For example, if you want to print a 3M post-it note, you want to create the publication to match the size specified by the manufacturer. We're going to choose postcards from publication types. Now you can select a size or a manufacturer. We're going to choose Office Depot under Manufacturers. Now we can choose a size. Click OK when you're finished. To change the orientation of your page from portrait to landscape or vice versa, click on the orientation button in the page setup group. Our blank template is in landscape mode. We can switch to portrait mode by clicking on this button here. When you're working with a blank publication and designing it yourself, you can use layout guides and rulers to organize and align your text and pictures, as well as other items into columns and rows. These tools make it a lot easier to design professional looking publications because it makes lining things up a snap. Without the guides and rulers, it would be hard to create an organized publication. Layout guides are there to help you align objects such as pictures and text boxes. You can enable the layout guides and get visible guidance to easily align everything on your page. Your layout guides can serve as a grid on your pages and master pages. You'll use the grids to align images, graphics, shapes, and any other object that you insert into a publication. The layout guides in Publisher 2016 include four layout guides, margin, column, row, and baseline. When you use these, they make up a grid. To structure a page using layout guides, click on the page design tab, then click on margins. Then select custom margins. Under the master pages category, make sure the two page master box is checked if you want a two page spread. Under margin guides, specify the amount of space you want for the inside, outside, bottom and top margins. Remember, the space you specify for the margins will be the amount of white space around your publication. You can see the current margins in the preview here. The outside of the blue box represents the margins. Now click on the Grid Guides tab. Under the Column Guides section, specify the number of columns in the Columns box. Then specify the amount of space you want between the columns in the spacing box. This will add columns to your presentation. You can see what happens when we add two columns here. The preview section has been updated. Now, under the row guides, do the same thing you did for columns, except this will be for rows. Clicking add center guide between columns and rows will add an additional guide in the center of the space between your columns and rows. Next, let's set up the baseline guides. Click on the baseline guides tab. Baseline guides help align the text that is not linked between several text boxes in columns. We'll learn about text boxes later in this course. Specify the amount of space that you want between the baselines. Click OK when you're finished. You can see the guidelines have been set up here. You can also add guides by going to the Page Design tab on the ribbon, then going to the Layout group. Click on the Guides drop down button here. These are the predefined ruler guides that Publisher gives you to use. 
You can select any of these or use the ruler to create your own. By default, the ruler extends horizontally above your publication and vertically along the left side of your publication. You can see the rulers highlighted here. Whenever you move your mouse over the work area, you'll see a black line appear on the ruler that tells you the location of your mouse. You can use this little black line to add guides. This is helpful if you want to align objects to the center of your publication or at a certain spot in your publication. To add a guide, click on the black line, then go to the Guides drop-down menu and select Add Vertical Ruler Guide. Use the vertical ruler to add a horizontal guide. You can easily change the background of your page from the plain white that you see right now. To add or change page background, click on the Page Design tab. Now, click Background in the Page Background group on the far right. Click in the Background drop-down menu toward the right of the ribbon here. Select the background that you want or click on More Backgrounds. If you click on More Backgrounds, you'll see the Format dialog box here. Let's talk about the different types of backgrounds you can create. Solid Fill, Gradient Fill, Picture or Texture Fill, and Pattern Fill. Fills are colours, patterns and images that you add to the background. Remember it like this. Fills are what fills a background with colour. You can use a solid colour fill, such as purple, blue, green and so on. You can also use a gradient fill, pattern fill or a picture. A solid fill is simply one colour that completely fills a background of your page. To choose a solid fill, put a check mark besides the solid fill in the Format Background dialog box. Select the colour and then adjust the transparency as needed. In a gradient fill, the colour is gradually shaded, usually from top to bottom. When you use a gradient fill, the colour fades in and out. You can also have more than one colour, and the colours will fade in and out. To create a gradient fill, go to the Fill section here, and put a check mark besides Gradient Fill. You can then choose a preset gradient if you want. A preset gradient determines how the colours fade in and out on your gradient. You can also choose a gradient type, such as linear or path. Next, you can choose the direction of the gradient. You can also select the angle of the gradient. Gradient stops determine the quickness of the fade in or fade out effect. In this screen here, you can see the gradient stops appear here. In this example, if you drag a gradient stop from the right to the left, it means the color will fade from a light blue to a dark blue quicker as opposed to a more gradual effect. You can add gradient stops by clicking on the Add Gradient Stop button. You can delete a gradient stop by clicking on Stop, then clicking on the Delete Gradient Stop button. Below the Gradient Stop buttons, you can also change the colour used in your gradient, as well as position and transparency. Take some time to explore the different options for creating gradients. The best way to learn how to create gradients is by actually creating them. In addition to using a gradient fill as a page background, you can also assign a pattern as a fill as the background image for your page. To assign a pattern, select Pattern Fill from the Format Background dialog box. Publisher supplies several patterns from which you can choose. Simply select the pattern, then select a foreground and background colour for the pattern. If you want to apply a picture or texture background instead of a pattern or gradient, go back to the More Backgrounds option, and then click on Picture or Texture Fill. If you want to insert a picture, choose if you want to insert it from a file on your computer, the clipboard, or from an image online. Some images that you might use are too dark for publication because you can't easily add text over them and have the text be seen. For that reason, you can increase the transparency of an image you use as the background so it's lighter and more transparent on the page. We'll talk more about inserting images later in this course. If you want to insert a texture, click on the Texture drop-down box. You'll then see different textures you can apply. You can then set the transparency of the texture. 
When you add a texture as a background, the texture is tiled over the entire area of the background. In other words, it will completely cover your page, but appear behind objects. If you choose to use a picture as a background and the picture isn't large enough to cover the entire page, you tile the picture so that it does. However, be warned, when you tile a picture, dozens of thumbnail-like instances of the picture will cover the page. If you want to tile a picture, put a check mark in the Tile Picture as Texture in the Format Background dialog box. You can then offset it horizontally or vertically, and scale it horizontally or vertically, align it to the page or mirror it. When you've finished adding your fill, click on the OK button. To view and edit your master pages, click on the View tab. On the far left, you'll find the Views group. Click on the Master Page button. When you do this, the view will change. Here you can see that a Master Page tab has been added to the ribbon. Instead of the pages of your publication, you will only see your master pages in the Page Navigation pane. You can add elements to a master page just like any ordinary page, except that everything you put on a master page will appear on every publication page it is applied to. To show you how this works, we're going to add a master page, edit it, then apply it to our publication. There are two ways to add a new master page. The first, and most obvious, is to click the Add Master Page button, which you can find on the far left side of the ribbon in Master Page View. The new master page dialog will open. Publisher automatically assigns a new master page an ID. This is basically a numbering system, except that instead of calling them page 1, page 2 and so on, we call them page A, page B and so on. You can change this ID if you want, but it's not really a big deal. In the description box, you can enter a short description. This can be an easy way to remember what's on a page if you have a lot of them. For instance, you might enter the title page, chapter headings, artwork, and so on. If you'd like a two-page spread, click on the two-page master checkbox. Click OK when you're finished. Another way to create a new master page is to right-click anywhere in the page navigation pane and select Add Master Page. Sometimes you might want to create a master page based on an existing master page. This is convenient if you already have many elements on a page and you want to add a few more objects, but not apply them all to the pages in your publication. To do this, right click on any master page in the page navigation pane. Now, select Insert Duplicate Page. Alternatively, you can select a page and then click Insert Duplicate Page in the Master Page tab. Click the Apply To button in the ribbon. You can choose to apply it to all the pages in your publication, to the currently selected page of your publication, or to apply the master page to a range of pages. Let's click Apply Master Page. When we do this, a window will open, asking us to choose a page or a range of pages. Make a selection and then click on OK. When you're finished creating, editing or applying your master pages, Click on the Close Master Page button in the ribbon to return to your page view. You can also use your master pages to apply backgrounds. To do this, go to the Page Design tab, click on the Master Pages drop down menu in the Page Background group. Select the master you want to use for the background. <laughs>